Welcome to Armino's Sage Intact Release Webinar. My name is Kim Insomo, and I'll be helping facilitate today's event. But before we get started, I wanted to go through a few housekeeping items. Uh, here are some Zoom webinar tips to help you engage with our presenters. Located on your Zoom toolbar, you'll see the Q&A, chat, and raise your hand icon. Uh, you can please ask questions throughout the presentation. We will do our best to answer your questions as we can. If for some reason we don't get to your uh, question, we'll be sure to reach out to you personally afterwards. Um, and just a special note, if you do have any uh, technical issues, go ahead and hit that raise your hand icon and I'll get to you as soon as I can as well. Uh, you can access your audio settings and test your audio when you are already in the meeting. At the bottom left-hand corner of the Zoom meeting toolbar, you'll find either the headphone or microphone logo to join audio or mute and unmute, respectively. Click join audio to choose whether to connect your computer to audio or dial into the meeting with a phone. So once you're connected, you can click mute um, to disable the audio or unmute to enable your audio. And just to let you know, today's webinar does qualify for CPE credits. In order to qualify, you must actively respond to all of the questions and stay on for the duration of the presentation. If you have any difficulties responding to the poll questions when they're up, please send an email to elevate at armininollp.com with your name, date of the session, along with your poll responses, and we'll get that adjusted for you. Just to let you know, this webinar is being recorded and you will receive a copy of the slide deck within 72 hours as well. So, and with that, I'd like to hand it over to our presenters today, Irene Bushnell and Michelle Schimberg. Hello everyone, happy Wednesday. Irene Bushnell, Senior Manager here at Armanino. Truly do enjoy the Sage Intact product and teaching users on how to use the project products. Uh, looking forward to sharing with you the new release features that just came out last Friday. Michelle. Thanks, Irene. Hi, I'm Michelle Schimberg. I am a director here at Armanino. I have spent 25 years of my life leading and finance and accounting teams in your roles. So I hope to, uh, I came to Armanino just to help people with Sage Intact, and I'm excited to share the new release. I did things today. Yeah, exciting. We're excited. You're going you're gonna to hear that in our voice because there's some really cool things. So let's get started. Our learning objectives for today, we want to identify the new release features of your intact solution so that you're aware of them. Uh, make sure that you're utilizing them if they're beneficial to your organization. We're going to demonstrate some of the new user experience and navigation so that you can quickly adapt these new release features into your organization. And we just want to make sure that you manage this a whole list of, of new release items and, and can pick out which ones are most important to you so that you can maximize the potential for your, for your organization and how you're using Sage Intact. So that's our, our learning objectives. And of course, to do that, we need to go through all of these agenda items. Multiple, as always, multiple modules are gonna be discussed as we go through today. We'll be sharing screens. I'll also be going in and into Intact sometimes to show things. Again, please, please ask questions along the way. We'll keep an eye on the, the Q&A and we'll answer things as we're going. And uh, let's get started. Michelle, you get to start with company and administration. Actually, we're gonna start with a polling question, Michelle. Yeah, here's our first polling question. Kim, all right, select all that are true related to PDF, related to PDF documents and attachments and notification. Lots of people answering. Yep. <laughs> I'll give you just a few more seconds to finish up. And remember that if you do want CPE, you are required to answer polling, so make sure you do. Great. Uh, closing in three, two, and one. Excellent. Looks like 63% of you are sending PDF documents. That's great. There's some nice uh, improvements there this time. 54% of you are including invoice attachments on customer emails, also uh, by PDF, and then the vendor payments, only a few of you are doing the notification email. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. All right, next screen. 
So uh, the first thing is that now with those PDFs that you're sharing with your customers, you can select to secure those PDFs with 128 encrypt bit encryption. In order to do that, you go to the platform services, go to print to doc template, figure out the template that you want to secure and check the little box for securing it. Noting that no actions other than printing are allowed when you send those documents. That includes editing, signing, copying, extracting, or commenting. Next screen. And also, if you run DDS jobs, you can now, they've added a new choice. You can add all changes since a specific date to keep the uh, queue, the large queues down. And back to you, Irene. All right, thank you. And for those of you that don't know, DDS stands for Data Delivery Service. So that is something that Intact offers if you have a lot of data that needs to be uh, exported from Sage Intact to another uh, uh, somewhere else. So Data Delivery Service. Thanks, Thanks Michelle. Mm -hmm. Budgeting and planning. In this release, there were no new features specific to the budgeting and planning module. Uh, but the thing about this module is Intact is doing improvements ongoing all the time. So if you are using this module, you're going to want to keep an eye out in the new release section of the homepage. You can see here on June 23rd, uh, there were several bug fixes and they included one new feature. Now you can download the list of data that hasn't been included in your about to be budget, okay, which allows you to easily see and understand why your data isn't included in your budget. Forecasting stuff, right? About to be budget. Also on June 23rd, uh, another uh, release with some bug fixes and a new feature. When you share a portion of your budget with other users in your organization, right, with other company users, the title of the shared portion also contains the overall budget name in parentheses. That way, when you, de when you deliver it, uh, you, whoever receives that notes that it's their portion of an overall budget and gives them that name. So that's a, a nice little enhancement. August 3rd, one enhancement and several bug fixes uh, with one import process from Excel. You can add new or update existing budget lines from almost anywhere in your budget. Or you can simply download that budget template and then easily export all of the existing data in your budget, update it and import it straight back into Intact. So it's talking back and forth. It's a nice feature. I like those templates where you can export ready for import back in. Those are those are nice templates. Yeah, that makes things a lot easier, Irene. It okay. does. So general ledger. So as you know, the GL outlier detection, they continue to improve on that. Your choice is there. And now you have you can set a materiality level. You choose per journal the materiality for transaction evaluation. So that's per journal, which is nice. And new, you have more defined icons. So you get your return, when you get your results, you have a coding amount or multiple outliers codes. So it lets you know, um, it gives you more insight into what the issues are. Next slide. Excellent. And multi-entity. Okay, this one's exciting. So if you have a multi-currency environment and a multi-entity company, and when you checked that box that said enable multi-currency subscription, you were never able to uncheck that box. The impact of that was if you didn't have multiple base currencies and you went um, and you didn't need it, it was frustrating because from the top level, if you tried to pull a general ledger report or something, you had to select a location. Now you can uncheck that box. One note is that disabling or enabling Multiple base currencies can affect any integrated services your company uses, such as external bill paying services. Consider carefully before doing changing the setting and please reach out to us if you need some help. Next yeah. slide, I think that's back to you, Irene. Yeah, thank you, that, that is a good one. So take a look at that in your multi-entity configuration. Uh, and if it's checked and it shouldn't be, you might wanna reach out to uh, Armanino just to validate, read more about it before you uncheck it and make sure that it is something that you wanna do. Awesome, okay, inventory. Intact continues to expand their inventory functionality, allowing for the transit time of warehouse transfers. So there is a transfer out and in transit. 
and a transfer in. And those are going to be uh, including the time of any of those warehouse transfers. This is a nice little uh, grid that tells you what state of the transfers it is in based on where it's at in the transaction. So good information there, a nice new feature. The ability to track extended, the ability now for tracking stockable kits, parent level only, for serial tracking, lot tracking, bin tracking, and expiration tracking. Intact has added all of those to stockable kits if you're doing those at the parent level. With this release, stockable kits with non-tracked components can be tracked, okay? So, so at this time, if your stockable kit has non-tracked components, you can start using these features. Tracked components will be coming in a future release. So Intact did let us know that. If you're doing kitting, this is a, a nice enhancement and uh, look to see that it's also gonna be available in the very near future related to tracked components. Another inventory enhancement is identify the items for cycle counts more easily, all right? Because Intact has added the item name in cycle counts, select items to cycle count and reconcile cycle count. So all three of those apps um, have the cycle, the, the item name in the reports now. New item attributes for density, if that's something that you're needed. And there's a new inventory configuration setting that allows you to run nightly updates for any of your MIV costing updates. For a lot of you, you'll probably have a deer in the headlight look right now, but if you're using the inventory module, uh, these are some nice new enhancements related to inventory. Going right into purchasing and order entry, not a lot in there, but kind of related to inventory as well. We've been talking in the last several releases about this new feature item cross references, right? It was available in the items and it was available on transactions. Today, it is available in your customers and your vendor record. There's a new tab there. You'll see that right on the screenshot there. So in my customer record, I have an item cross-reference where I can do cross-reference specifically for a customer or a vendor. Okay, good features. Nice enhancement there. This is an exciting one. A lot of you use purchasing. Okay, this is in the early adopter program and they're continuing this. We talked about it in the last release and it's called three-way matching. Three-way matching is that process where Intact is going to match and validate the details of a purchase before making a payment. Intact's gonna look at the invoice, the purchase order and the receipt and do some validation before it allows you to make the payment. There's some notes in here about what happens. So if the quantity and unit prices that appear on the three transactions um, are not the same, they're, they're automatically compared. And if they're not the same, then you're gonna get warnings and you're gonna get uh, th that ability to be flagged that there's a problem there. Okay, so this is nice. If anybody's interested in this three-way matching, um, please reach out to your Armanino client manager. Uh, they are extending the early adopter program, meaning you can get in on that, test the functionality, uh, help them, you know, kind of fine tune it and identify things and make sure that it makes a, a lot of sense in the functionality that they're doing. So three-way matching in purchasing. Accounts payable, Michelle. Thanks, Irene. Okay, so for those of you who do send payment notifications, I want to first of all, it was a small adoption and I don't know if you know that in your configuration you can choose, I believe it's a vendor configuration, you can choose to send payment notifications to their email. Now when you send that payment notification, you can choose to include or exclude a PDF attachment. It defaults to include, so you need to select don't include payment copy PDF in vendor payment in the uh, AP. Should, oh, go ahead. Should we look at that real quick? Sure. We're talking about in here in a vendor setup screen. Correct. And then if we yeah. go to the payment information tab and then we check send automatic payment notifications here. Yep. 
And I do have a screenshot in the deck of what that notification looks like to the client or to your customer, your vendor, excuse me. So you can attach the PDF, or, which again can be secured, and you can include payment details in the email body, such as total build payment, total build amounts, applied credits, advances, or discounts. So if you're not using it, I suggest that uh, you, if you are interested in that, let us know. We can help you set that up. Yeah, and this is a good thing because in the past, we had no control over this notification. It was what it was. End of story, right? Uh, so if you've been using Intact for a while, I know that during implementations, many of you choose not to send a notification to your vendors because you could not customize it. Now Intact is, is opening that up, of course, and allowing us to be able to start doing some modifications to that vendor notification email. So that is, that is good news. Thank you. Yeah. All right, let's go to polling question number two, please. We wanted to ask you about attachments in Intact. We wanna make sure that everybody is aware of all of these uh, cool things you can do with attachments in Intact. By the way, if your polling screen, when your polling screen comes up, you can expand it and make it bigger if you can't see the entire words, just grab it and you can expand it and make it, and make it bigger. Did you know that you can add attachments to a paid AP bill? Keep going. Let's see how everybody does here. A lot of companies are using attachments now, Michelle. I, we're finding that more and more common all the time. You know, it makes life so easy. I've got a lot of new uh, implementations. And as you know, we also do audit and I'll get the auditors to call me and say, hey, I've got access to the system. Can you show me how? And I was able to show one client or one uh, auditor how to log in, pull a general ledger, drill all the way down, see the attachments, and it makes your audit a much better experience if you have the attachments within all these different transactions. Yeah, for sure. Uh-oh. So, oh, yeah, yeah, my apologies. That should have been a multiple choice. Please select one answer oh. for that one. <laughs> my, that's my bad. I apologize, ladies. Oh, whoopsie, yeah. Okay, well, pick your favorite answer. Yes, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> you can actually edit it, but I don't know. You would have to restart it, just, but that's okay. No worries. Right. All right, let's end polling then. I like that. Everybody so we'll go ready? ahead and close out the polling. All right. So yes, of course, you can add attachments to a paid AP bill. That's exciting, right? The bill's in, uh, it's been paid, you, you realize something didn't get attached, or you want to go put something in there, you can do that. You can view attachments in the journal entry list screen, right? So when you're looking at the journal entries list, there's a little icon on the right that shows attachments. You can view the attachment directly from the journal entry list screen as well. Okay, not very many people knew that. Yes, you can create a smart rule that requires attachments on most of the screens. So if you are doing AP bills and you want an attachment to always be included, or at least give a warning to remind somebody to do an attachment, uh, reach out. We're happy to help with that smart rule. That's a fun one to do. It's not too difficult. You can drag and drop attachments directly from emails into Intact. Looks like about 30% of you knew that. Uh, so that's a biggie. In the past, you always had to go save your attachment to your network or to, to your desktop and then browse or drag and drop it. Today with Edge and, and Chrome, so with Google Chrome and Microsoft Edge, you can drag right from your email attachment on to Intact and it will go. However, it is not yet available with Firefox or Internet Explorer. But well, uh, well worthy of, of changing to Google or Edge if you need that feature. A lot of you have printers that automatically, when you go scan it, it sends you an email with an attachment. You just put it right in Intact. All right, and a couple of people will say that they're not using attachments in Sage Intact yet. So uh, maybe some of these will entice you to do so. All right, thank you. We can stop sharing. Okay, accounts receivable, some exciting things with the uh, bill back feature in Intact. So today the inter entity bill back supports companies subscribed to taxes. 
If you're using those bill back transactions, you can have up to three currencies, like it says on the example there, your US entity, a base currency of USD, a UK entity with a base currency of GBP, but your transaction currency could be Euro. You can add your tax solution before you post the bill, but you have to save it as draft so that you can then add it and it will post directly to your IET mapped offset accounts uh, by checking using those uh, on the bill back template. All right, I wanted to show uh, in intact about the bill back feature in case some of you had no idea what this was or that you even had it. Uh, all of you have the bill back feature, it's, it's a free feature. The first thing you have to do is go to accounts receivable, setup, configuration, and then uh, you can search for bill back, Use that lovely control find on your browser. There it is. So you can in, enable inter entity bill back. You, if you have the tax solution, you're gonna select draft first so that you can then uh, have the VAT tax solution enabled. And then, uh, or if you don't use tax, like I'm not here, you can just have it post directly. So first thing you have to just turn it on. All right, and then make sure you have permissions in your roles. Then you're gonna go to your company setup tab and in your entities you're going to determine which entities are going to do bill back in other words one entity is going to enter an invoice in ar through that process intact is going to add a bill in another entity nice right so if we look here at the usa entity come to the additional information tab for entities that are gonna use Billback together, you need to make sure and set up a vendor and a customer for each entity. Next, you're gonna set up a Billback template. And you can only do this in AR, by the way, it cannot be done in order entry as of today. I'm gonna to come to accounts receivable, my setup tab, and here are my Billback templates. I'm gonna set up a Billback template that indicates the revenue account, the bill, AP bill GL account, a department as needed, and then a memo item. You can have more than one row if you need to, That's, that is allowed, all right? And then when you go in to add an invoice and you pick that customer, it's going to allow automatically go in and as soon as you create that invoice, it's gonna go in and create a bill in the other entity in that inter-entity bill back relationship. Okay, that's a really nice feature. And a lot of times it is not enabled when a company first gets going because they don't have a need for that. So I just wanted to remind people that that's there. Uh, and, and if it's something of interest, you should use it because it is a really nice feature. Another exciting enhancement in accounts receivable is you can unapply credits that were posted to a payment. Yay. So we're in accounts receivable we have an invoice and we enter a credit memo. We go in and we apply that credit memo to an invoice, right? Because we want to reduce that invoice, we apply that credit memo. That's the only thing that's applied to the invoice. The payment is the credit memo. So here I have my credit memo and it was for $900 or something. This is my payment, not my credit memo, sorry. But over here, I can actually unapply it. So I can go in and I can unapply that credit memo that was applied to this invoice via the payment process and apply that credit memo to the right invoice or reverse it or delete it if I need to now. So unapplying a credit from a posted payment. Very nice. Very excited about that one. The last accounts receivable enhancement here, if you're doing anything with penalties, in the past, when you would calculate your penalties, you would have to select each customer invoice that needed to have a penalty. You now have the option up here at the top. When you go in there, you can select all of the invoices and then uncheck a few of them if that's faster for you. That's exciting. Yeah, right. Okay, it's back little to Little things in life. Thank you. It is. Thank you, Irene. All right, so they have some new changes in uh, reporting. So first, now in the, the, the new Quick Start Library layout and install. Now when you go to your uh, reports and you go to add a report, you'll notice that there is a Quick Start Library 
uh, box. The Quick Start Library contains pre-designed reports that you can install and use as is or modify to suit your organization's needs. Note also when you go to the Quick Start Library now there's a new button for the layout. And the layout uses the HTML output to show you exactly what's going to be in that report. This is a nice start. It's a place to start with your reports and you can add and edit as you need. Um, note that the reports that are available in the library are dependent on what Quick Start template was used to create your company. That's really exciting. Yeah. It's nice to know what you're about to get instead of getting all the way in. All right, next is they've added some new financial report columns. First one is normalized. Now they had budget to actual normalized. And what normalized does is it adjusts the sign to more accurately show results. Meaning that if my revenue is higher than my budget, that's a good thing. I want that to show as a positive number. However, if my expenses are higher than my budget, that's a bad thing. And I wanna show that as a negative number. The new, um, the new uh, columns or options are report. Now you have a period variance normalized and a period difference normalized. The other thing that's very exciting, I know this seems like a small thing, but it's been nine years I've used Sage Intact and I've always wished they had it. They have a divider column. So now Yay! one of your choices is spacer. I'm so excited. I know it's silly, but. I can't tell you how many people ask you because when you've got the report and it looks like, um, to somebody said a report looked like a run on sentence the other day. This gives right. you the ability to add a spacer, which is so exciting. Yep. so right down here, you go to your columns tab in your financial report, right? And at the very bottom, vertical divider, a spacer. And you'll have a space in your report like Michelle has on her screen. Very nice, that is exciting. Yeah, I'm excited about that. All right, next, <clears throat> next slide. Also for the forecasts. So I don't know if any of you have ever used the field, the forecast uh, column. And previously, the only one that was there was the prorated, which used daily proration information for partial periods. So if you were pulling it on the 10th of the month, it would pull the actuals for the first 10 days and the budget amount for the last the prorated budget amount for the last 20 days. Now you can put a column that's forecast full period, which just assumes the budget amount is entered on the first day of the reporting period, which is a nice feature. Yeah. Next, all right, default other books. As you know, last uh, release, they allowed you to default other books. Now the use of default other books is extended to include on new financial reports. So if you're using any books, any other books, um, this will tell you, you can uh, use them all the time. Uh, which sorry. leads us into which, a polling yeah, question. I was thinking the polling question came first. So I'm so <laughs> sorry. <laughs> all right. So which of the other books do you use in Sage Intact? So tax books and I like this for when the auditors come in and they just they don't seem to understand what accounting, uh, how we function, and they reclassify things in our audit report. I always like to use an audit book so that I can produce financials that match the audited financials, but they're not actually hitting my general ledger. So for those of you who don't use other books, which it looks like some of you are, or 60% at this point, um, other books are a secondary set of books that are not your general ledger that you can layer on and report with or without. So as, as I explained with the audit, the auditors come and they reclassify something from where you normally have it on the balance sheet. And you can then book an adjustment in that other book and pull the report with that other book. Uh, we'll leave it open. I know somebody had commented that they could not see the polling questions. Just want to make sure that maybe you don't have dual screens or it popped up behind the presentation screen. You might want to do an alt tab to see if it's if it's hiding somewhere. And if you need help, if you need help with um, books, please reach out to us. 
Yeah, because that's an, that's another one of those things that everybody you have available to you. You just have to know, you know, to, to turn it on and configure it. Uh, and there's a lot of good use case scenarios for using uh, different types of books, ledgers, right, without affecting your your accrual books. And then you can do so many things with those other sets of books. Awesome. Did you see that somebody's saying that Firefox does yes, work? Yes, I asked them, back. Which is very yes. exciting. Well, and I've got to double check that. So thank you for that, because someone's saying that, yes, Firefox is um, ha ha has been working with Firefox for years and never had a problem with the drag and drop feature. And so I am just shocked by that because I cannot make it work. And according to Intex community, it only works on Microsoft Edge and, and uh, Google Chrome. So I will be testing that and getting back to you on that one. No, the other books feature... Oh, your go poll. ahead. I, I'm going to close your poll really quick and I'll share results. But yes, please answer as well. Yeah. Great. So um, other books feature does not cost anything to activate. No, absolutely not. It's just a configuration setting over in the general ledger. Let's just go there. I'm going to go over to that. I'm at the top level. I'm in my general ledger module. I'm in setup configuration. And then there is down here about three quarters of the way down. It's called um, advanced, I think, options, advanced GL options, and then enable user-defined books. The only thing you'll note here is it does say you cannot disable once transactions are entered. So if you start using other books and then decide you don't want it, you cannot disable it if you've got transactions entered. Uh, but that's not of a big concern because you just ignore those other books if you don't need them. It's only you see them when you want to see them. Whenever you're going in and you're running reports, for example, if I'm in my general ledger and I'm running my general ledger reports, right? I'm going to have that option to select any books that I have to run along with or without my accrual books. So another example for the use of another book is commitment books. So if you're using purchasing or order entry and you want to be able to pull your reports with the outstanding purchase order commitments and or with with the outstanding sales order commitments, you put those posts to another book that can be set up in your um, purchasing transaction definition. Yes, but, absolutely. And you said with with order entry as well. I thought you could do it with order entry. I've done it with order entry as well. So okay. maybe I'm crazy. <laughs> no, okay. I just wasn't sure because it wasn't available all the time. So if that's out there now, that's awesome. But I think I think you might be right. Okay, let's keep going. Thank you. We'll stop sharing and we'll keep going. Next slide. All right. And the last thing in reporting is that checklists and change requests reporting areas have been added to ICRW and IVE. They continue to invest in those two products, which is great. They've also updated projects and timesheet permissions for ICRW and IVE users, now employee users of projects and timesheets, reporting areas can run reports. Also, uh, the date format preferences are now supported for advanced reporting. And back to you, Irene. Oh, no, not back to you, still with me. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going, you're doing good. Keep going. <laughs> All right. As you uh, as you may have bumped into, if you hadn't been um, hadn't seen the new releases, they did do the matching rules last um, last release, and I know we had a lot of questions about that because of the um, because it. It meant you couldn't do your bank rack unless you'd set them up. So I'm assuming all of you have set them up, but now they've added more choices to it. So they have improved many to one and one to many matching capability. You can group one to many or many to one matching to cover more scenarios with complex banking. You can also, uh, there's powerful new filtering options. So there's new operators, including flexible text, amount, and date fields for enhanced matching flexibility. And finally, there's a flexible date comparisons. So you can set up a matching condition using the operator within or uh, to specify a range of posting dates. Nice. Cool. Yeah, next slide. And as you know, Sage Intact is expanding across the, the world. And so Canadian check printing, they have now, um, there's an out of the box solution for pre-printed checks for Canadian companies. You select the option to use Canadian check stock, as you can see here in the screenshot. 
that is at the checking account, uh, the setup of the checking account. If you have a USD bank, checks printed on Canadian check stock will print in USD currency and dates, date format on Canadian check always prints to match the appropriate date format as defined on the check. Next slide. All right. Back, back to you. That's back to you, Irene. Contracts. The contracts module continues to grow with new enhancements all the time. Again, we're sharing with you in the top right hand corner ideas that came from the community just to validate. Intact does listen. Uh, please make sure you're going into the community and voting on ideas and adding ideas because they truly do uh, watch that and implement things that a lot of people are voting for. One of those is usage-based billing now gets committed. So there's new contract line fields that support the feature of having your usage-based billing being committed. You can see down there on the screenshot, uh, the quantity type can be variable or committed. And then when you calculate, you have the committed quantity if that's the option that you're choosing. Consolidating all of your invoices by the contract line bill to contact. You'll notice in the screenshot when you go to generate invoices, you have the ability to choose the bill to as an option now and then all of those invoices that you're consolidating into one. Um, when you run those, you can use that bill to contact. A nice one here for those of you that don't want to call it contracts, you can now rename that dimension. I think you can just pretty much rename any dimension now at this point. That's, I think, might have been the last one that was not renameable. So that's exciting. And then the billing price list entry detail and a billing price list entry detail tier objects have been um, added in the custom report writer so that if you need the details from those particular objects, you'll be able to write some custom reports off of those. If you're using the interactive custom report writer, they have given a contract ready report. It's a little bit blurry here on the screen, uh, but it's a free report. You don't have to pay for it. So that's a nice nice thing. As, as, as long as you're using the, inter uh, the interactive custom report writer, which that report writer you have to have a subscription for, but this report is free out of the box. And it shows, as you can see, uh, your deferred revenue burn down in your ICR report writer. And then we have platform and web, web services. There's always the enhancements. Most of these are, of course, are related to fixes in the system, uh, things that are also related to other things that we've been covering in this uh, new release webinar. So just some things that have been fixed. I'm not going to go through each of those. You can read those. You will get this slide deck after uh, today's call within a few days to refer back to as well. You can also find this in the new release, but um, these are just some of the things that have been enhanced for web service calls, right? API calls, if you've got two systems talking to each other. Advanced CRM. Intact continues to make a lot of enhancements to be able to have a solid integration with advanced CRM into Sage Intact. Updating uh, field mapping functionality. So the standard field mappings, Intact requires, Intact required fields are always set to active. So if it's a required field in your general ledger and you've got it set as a required field or a required dimension, then that's going to map back over as, as active over in uh, Salesforce. And then there's some custom field mapping updates. They're now bi-directional. That can be nice, which way you want to go between Salesforce and Intact. The project dimension is now syncing to Salesforce with the advanced CRM enhancement. So in the past, that had to be kind of a customization to make that happen. Now that's going to be able to be selected. Contract sync updates, you can now sync as a draft and you can choose a sync only once option. And there is support for committed quantity billing. So if you're using Salesforce, a couple nice things there. The construction early adopter program continues to be built out. Uh, if you're interested at all in this early adopter program, please um, reach out to experts at Armanino LLP, let us know, we'll, we can get you included in that. Some of the functionality uh, included in the construction early adopter program, streamlining for billing of project changes. 
capturing projects on your purchasing documents related to the construction uh, information, generating reports that use standard indus industry standard categories, and then tracking change orders by a specific log number so that you've got an ability to, to look back at that and follow that through the, the change order. Oh. Taxes. Thanks, Irene. All right, taxes. They've made a much bunch of improvements to taxes this uh, this release related to uh, support for uh, Canadian sales taxes. Example, they're supporting Canadian uh, GST, QST, PST, and HST. <laughs> for all of your minds are going. Those of you who don't use taxes. Um, but I won't read all of these. But there's more control over tax capture. It's a lot of um things related to the multi-currency and multi-entity um, that they are growing out. They're streamlining the copy and convert, but this slide will be available for you to read. So I won't read through all of them. All right. Dashboards, mm -hmm. dashboards and insights. So several new components being added to dashboards in intact which is very exciting. I just did the dashboards class in the academy the other day and I was bummed because I wasn't able to show these yet because the release just happened Friday. So uh, let's talk about these. We've got a couple different things that I'm gonna show you in Intact. We're gonna come over to Intact where I have a dashboard built. And if you think about this, um, you have a lot of flexibility with these new components to help users um, drive their Intact day from a dashboard because you have the ability to put so many things on a dashboard and help them get to things. So the new three components, the first thing is a billboard style message box. So this one right here is a message box. It's purchasing policies. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the component. It's basically just a text box. All right, so here it is. It's a general component type. The type is billboard. You put whatever you want for the title, you give it a height and then you put content in it. So in this case, I wanted to let the purchasing team know that the purchasing policy effective on July 1st now requires two signature awards on, two, two signatures on all project or grant awards, okay? So just a nice little message board that you can put up there on uh, a dashboard. You also have the ability to do what's called an attachment container. This is an attachment container. I'm gonna click on the gearbox. It is also under the general component. Select attachment container. You're gonna give it a, a, a name as always. You can only select one attachment ID. All right, so there's one attachment ID, but notice, well, Irene, there's one attachment ID, but there's four different attachments. Let's look at that for just a minute. If I go, let me make sure I'm at the top level. Yep, I'm gonna go back to the company setup. Remember we have attachment folders. So for this example, I created an attachment folder called purchasing, of uh, not purchasing, policies and procedures. So I'm gonna start storing my policies and procedures here in Sage Intact. When I go in to see the attachments that are in there, I can have as many different attachments as I want. This one called purchasing policies, attachment ID 42, actually has four attachments in it. So that's how in an attachment container, back over here, you can see that I have four different attachments that I can link to from only one attachment container. So you kind of have to think about how you're gonna do that. This is how the creativity gets flowing. I love it. Yeah, it's really nice too because way too often, I mean, even here, we're gonna we're gonna fess up here even at Armanino. We sp sometimes spend way too much going and looking for something, right? A guide or a procedure document. It's like where in the net on the network is that document? So if it's something related to the process in Sage Intact, a workflow or or whatever. You can now put that in Sage Intact in the attachment folder, and then you can bring it in on a dashboard. As of today, no, you cannot modify the document. So even though I've got a Word document here, I, if I were to open that Word document, no, I would not be able to 
modify it, save it, and have it refresh. You would have to go modify it in its original source, come in, reattach it in order for the changes to make happen. So can't update the documents, but you can have them sitting here on a dashboard for your employees. The third new component is a custom navigation. So in Intact, you can basically, uh, on your dashboard, you can click, ha have hyperlinks that go other places in Intact. So if I click on my gearbox, I come in, this is called custom navigation, pick my height, and then here I'm going to give it a link name, and then there's a whole ton of items that I can select from. I can select other dashboard components, they're kind of organized report components, I can go, I, so I could put my report center, dimensions, all of my different dimensions and records, all sorts of dimension structures that I've built. You, If you go into your intact right now and you go to this component, you're going to see different things because it's actually a live feed that is pulling things that I have set up in this company file. Okay, so there's standard things like cloud storage and whatnot, but there's also things that you've set up in your own organization. Checklists, configuration screens, probably would never need those on a dashboard. Cash management, reconciling your bank, right? So links, these are called uh, custom navigation and you can go ahead and do custom navigation and put those on the dashboard. If you think about what this does, you guys, this really opens up the ability to have a very day driven dashboard because I can land on this when I come in. I've got my policies here. I can have links to things that I do. What if you are an approver? It's, it's a management type dashboard, right? And so you've got that approval information. You can have that information sitting here and then you can take them right to the approval list if you needed to. Uh, kind of the sky's the limit here. Very exciting. Just some other general things about the dashboard. We want to make sure people are aware of a lot of things on the dashboard. You can create user groups and assign a user group to a dashboard. That's a really nice feature if you have a lot of users. You can, you can build a purchasing dashboard. You can go to a user group, create a purchasing user group, and you can put multiple people into a group and then assign that group to the dashboard. That's done under the gearbox of the dashboard on the permissions tab. You can assign a group or a person to have permissions to a dashboard. You can collaborate on a dashboard. Yes, hopefully all of you are using collaborate. That is such a nice feature to be able to talk about your accounting transactions in your accounting software. So you can drive that from your dashboard. You can use computation account groups in performance cards. Okay, so if you if you like computations, you want to do something with some square footage or uh, things that you want to calculate, not actually use an intact, you can do that. I, I always use this example in the dashboard class that I teach in the academy. We all have off, not everybody, but you have office space and, and your controller kind of wants to know, well, what what is it costing me for the square footage by each of my departments, right? Well, you don't want to go in and allocate every bill by department to, to code that out. But heavens, yes, you can do a, a computation account group with a statistical account, put in your square footage, and you can have your average allocated square footage by department sitting on a dashboard on performance cards. Another new thing that some of you might not have known about, because this came about in a few releases ago, but the custom reports do now update based on the as of date filter across the top of the dashboard. In the past, that did not happen, but now custom reports will update based on the as of date. That deserves confetti. <laughs> that is a nice one, isn't it? Because There's that was nothing. so frustrating. Oh, I know. You build a report, you put it on there, and you, you're like, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, Judah, 831, it's got the wrong information. <laughs> yeah, right. So that is a nice feature. And then, of course, uh, uh, custom views created on list views can be used on a dashboard. 
So if you go into your purchasing transactions and you create this really nice custom view on your purchase orders that shows you specific information with filters about uh, who, you know, who, who's, who it's waiting for to be submitted or whatever, of course you can use those custom views on a dashboard record when you're doing those. So some nice, nice things happening with dashboards. Uh, hopefully some of you are intrigued by some of those but I, I personally like the direction Intact is going with the ability with these additional items that they've added on, on this particular one. And if you missed last release, uh, you can now see your um, closing dates, what period each of your entities and modules in. That's a component too that we shared, uh, Michelle and I shared last, last release. So, okay, on and on, Irene, keep going. Dashboards. Well, me, oh, I was going to say, let me say something about, quick about a dashboard. So as I said, I was a user of Sage Intact. And the thing I regret the most is that I didn't set up dashboards because after you go live and you're so busy working, you don't set the dashboards up. And they're really not that hard. You just watched Irene show you how easy it is to add components and build a dashboard. So don't be afraid of them. Oh, and Michelle, we have a really good question related to the new spacer column in reports. Okay. Will, will that show up on dashboards? I don't, I don't know that we tested that. We didn't, but if you add, why don't you add the report I added, which I believe I did, I called it release. All right, so we're gonna add a report component. It's going to be a financial report. It's probably, does it have a report type? Uh, I don't think so. Okay, so it's gonna be release down in the R's maybe. I thought it was down in the R's. Let's look. It's a great question. Thanks for asking yeah. that. Sometimes we don't think of everything when we're and this is, for this. No, shoot. Hold on. Uh, where am I going to find the darn thing? Uh, let me go up to, can we go to the report list, uh, the report center, please? And as you know, you can now filter on reports. So if you go to the filter and do R3, I think, I think it's R or yeah, it's R, R, did I not give you, oh, geez, no, that's not very helpful. Let's just add, let's add a space, sorry. Yeah, we can, I was gonna say, does it have your name? Are you the owner? Should be. That's not very helpful. Okay. I don't well, think I gave you access. Well, let's just, like you say, let's just do it on one of the standard ones. So we're just gonna take the standard, I'm gonna go right to the, um, financial reports. I'm going to take the out of the box balance sheet right here. Balance sheet condensed. We'll do a condensed one. We're going to go to columns. We've got about eight minutes left. We got time to do this, Michelle. And we're going to put a we're going to put a space right here. So we're going to this add a column to part. the left between columns three and four. And so now on this column, we're just going to change this one to this new spacer. Save and done. And I'm gonna come back over here now and I should be able to find that. Don't stay on page. I'm just gonna bring in my balance sheet now. Balance sheet condensed, save. We'll put it up in the top left-hand corner for us. Refreshing. That was a good question. Well, and this goes to show how not that difficult it is to do this. Oh, look, it is. Yes, yes, it is. There's that little spacer right there. So it does. Yes, the answer is yes. Good question. Thank you. All right, that is all of the new release features in, to, in, in this latest release, some very good ones. Our last polling question, of course, uh, related to that, uh, of these new features, what are the things that you uh, will likely be most interested in? Happy to answer any other questions related to the release features. As Kim shared with before, uh, you will be receiving a copy of the PDF within a couple of days. We've covered a lot of things today. These are all of the modules that had some new release features. Don't forget about the Armenino Academy. We do uh, some nice, uh, especially reporting and dashboard classes in the Academy. You're welcome to go take a look at those and reach out to your client manager if you want more information on the Academy. Sage Intact Advantage is now Sage Transform. It is in Vegas this year. It is going to be both live and virtual because of course with COVID and everything going on, uh, people are going to have some options. So here's information on that. And if they are interested in this, Kim, 
Should we have them reach out to their? Yeah, reach out to your client managers, or if you're not sure who your client manager is, you can always email us at experts at Armanino. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, so it looks like we have a lot of people who are loving the vertical divider. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best thing ever, I'm so excited. Such a simple <laughs> thing too. I know, right? Unapplying credit invoices, the new dashboard components, good. And quite a few with the item cross references of interest. So that's very good as well. Great, I'll, Excellent. Uh, we I'll have close the poll question? here in okay. three, two, one. Any last minutes? Okay. Good question in the Q&A. Again, another thing that I have not tested, so I do not know the answer to that. That would be something I would have to test. The question is, if you attach a file with the bill back, will the attachment show in both entities? I, I want to think it does, but I would have to test that to see. So uh, anybody else have any other questions? Michelle, keep an eye on them and post them and let yes. me get over. And let's just see if that in fact happens or not. So I'm gonna come into accounts receivable and I've got my USA holding customer, I think is the one that has a bill back right now. Let me just make sure that's the one that used my bill back template. Yes, so USA holding, all right. I wonder if I can just duplicate it for ease. Let's see if it'll let me. Okay, so, oh, it didn't let me do the bill back when I duplicated though. Let me try this. USA holding. Oh, there we go. So now I can pick my bill back and I'm going to drag and drop an attachment on. Okay, now I, I don't know that I have one in Firefox though right now. So I'm gonna have to test that later. Because last I tested it, it did not work but I will be excited if it does. Intact. Okay, so I'm just dragging and dropping an attachment onto the invoice with the bill back feature. I'll go ahead and just make an amount that we can easily find. I'm gonna put this in the 100 entity. And then over here, I'm going to pick my vendor for my um, other entity. Hold on a second. I got to go make sure I remember which. Hard to remember, isn't it, Irene? Well, yeah, especially with the um, accounts receivable invoices right here. It'll tell you if it's the wrong one. So, I mean, it's not like I could do the wrong vendor, but I just don't want to spend too much time trying to find it when it should be right here. USA entity vendor. There we go. So even though this is kind of a unique thing, but even though the um, vendor is on the bill back template, you still have to add it when you're doing the actual invoice in the accounts receivable module. Okay, so now if I go over to accounts payable and I go okay. to my bill screen, let's see if the attachment's there. No, it is not there. So the answer is no, darn it. Good question. Thank you. You know what? That sounds like something we need to put in community as an idea. Uh-huh. For sure. Go with it, guys. Let us know. We'll vote. Yeah. Let us know if you put the idea in there. We'll go vote for it. Okay. We've got about three minutes left. Anybody have any other questions related to today's new release? Yeah, everybody's good. Okay, hopefully you're all over in your system turning on some of these features right. or <laughs> making sure you know how to use these. So that's exciting. And if you're going to go into configuration and change things, I do suggest that you take a screenshot before and then change things so that if something changes and you're like, oops, you know what was checked. Yeah. That from personal experience. <laughs> Thank you all very much for attending, spending your time with Michelle and I. We thor thoroughly enjoyed sharing all the new release information, having you part of the, the session today. We'll look forward to seeing you on the next one. They've got their last release in probably November sometime. I didn't even look to see. Probably right uh, after Advantage. Yeah, probably right after. Or excuse the, me, Transform. <laughs> Sage Transform. Yeah. All right, well, everyone have a wonderful day. Be safe out there. Absolutely. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle Thank and Irene. You. Take care, everyone. Bye.
Bye-bye. Bye-bye.